You ever have the feeling in your house there's someone nearby, but when you turn to look, there's nobody? Maybe you should have your house checked for ghosts. Now, this isn't something you want to do by yourself, so we called Spirit Finders, Paranormal Investigators of Smithfield, Rhode Island. One look at the Spirit Finders website, and we knew we'd come to the right place. Have strange, strange activities, activities been occurring in your home? Do you things that go bump in the night awake? Do you hear strange voices and footsteps? Are you looking for answers? And let our team of experts give you the answers you see. So, how was Spirit Finders founded? Well, we all had the interest in ghost hunting. Um, we've always wanted to get out there and do it, and we've been doing it for well over a year now. A lot of people get interested in the paranormal because they've already had an experience themselves and they want to learn more about it. I actually grew up in a haunted house, um, and things started happening when I was seven years old, and that's when I began reading and studying uh, metaphysics and parapsychology. What kind of training does it take to be a paranormal investigator? Really, a desire for the paranormal is what's most required. An open mind, being able to accept things that normal people wouldn't be able to, uh, to definitely. be able to uh, mm -hmm. go the extra mile and <clears throat> pick out things that normal people wouldn't be able to see. What tools do you use in your work? Batteries, batteries, batteries. One of the biggest signs of activity is battery drainage. The theory is that they're trying to manifest, so they have to draw energy in order to do that. We can pick that up by drainage of batteries, the energy that they're trying to drain manipulates the electromagnetic fields, which we can detect uh. by using this, and it may also possibly draw down the temperature, which we can monitor with the thermometers. Uh, we use voice recorders for EVPs, again EVPs, electrical voice phenomena, mm -hmm. digital cameras, or regular 35 millimeter cameras. We also use camcorders for night vision, for obvious reasons. Uh, tell me what brought you to the Smith Appleby house. I was online looking at uh, cemeteries that we could go to. Just looking around with my camera and I happened to run into one of the historical society members. And he goes, we've been looking for somebody to come in and investigate the place. And I said, what do you know? We do that. It was a great investigation. Tell us about the basement. What's, uh, what happened with the basement? Well, the basement is, uh, back then, you know, if somebody died in the wintertime, they couldn't very well take them out to the family plot, which is out there. So they buried them in the basement. Um, and then they waited till springtime, and they would take them out to the cemetery to bury them. We caught a lot of a lot of EVPs, but we caught one that was it was calling Ernie. It's sort of a science, sort of an art, but mostly creepy what these folks do, and you gotta believe. Uh, what was special about the Lost City case? Well, we did find out it was used as um, the Underground Railroad during the Civil War. They used to hide the slaves there. Right? There's another theory where the people that lived in Smithfield got a very contagious communicable disease, and they put them out there in the woods to live and to die. So the village, then, you know, it had its problems. It collapsed sometime in the 1800s. Uh, we found one cellar hole in a graveyard. That was it. But from that section, we got a lot of EVPs. Um, there was one that was telling us, look in the woods, go down here, get out, go away. The EVPs that we picked up over here were, um, there was a little girl saying, please bury me. Um, there was a male voice that said, look in the woods. Um, there was another, a, a little girl saying, get down, uh, follow me go this way. Uh, they were all telling, to me, they were all telling a tale that something had already taken place. So what do you say to skeptics, uh, people who say there's no such thing as ghosts, who don't believe? I was the one that says, oh, that's not a cold spot, that's a breeze coming through a window. You know, that was me. I'm not that anymore. Yeah, there's uh, an old saying that for a skeptic, uh, there is no evidence, and for a believer, no, no evidence is necessary. So if you think your house has guests that you can't see, or something just plain weird is going on, you might want to call the experts when it comes to this stuff. And if you have any ideas that you think we should know about, write us at ideas at newengland.com. 
I'm Kirk Klump for NewEngland.com TV. See you next time.